So this video is a little unplanned, um, but I thought I'd make it. Not really on topic for my channel, but something, you know, a lot of you are probably aware of. So yesterday, uh, Stan Lee died, and I just like to talk about that. Um, I, I don't think it's, it's a huge surprise. The man was 95, he, you know, at most he had a couple of years, and it's very sad. His last year seemed pretty rough with all the news reports. You know, his wife died about a year ago, and then issues with friends and family, people taking advantage of him, and all this stuff, and that's pretty sad. But I want to talk about some, some things about Stan Lee that I, I have found interesting over the years. And one of the main things is that he was able to experience so much of his creations. And what I mean about that, I think the first time I really thought about that was probably like 15 years ago. And I was at uh, Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, which is a few hours from here. I used to go there. I used to get the year passes and go you know, a couple times a year. Um, I actually haven't been there in probably almost, you know, 10 years, probably at least eight years. Uh, but if you've ever been to Universal Studios and Islands Adventure, they're two theme parks owned by the same company right next to each other. And usually if you get a pass to one, at least back in the day, it was good to both of them. So if you're really quick, you can knock out both parks in a day. Um, but Islands Adventure is a, a theme park where there's, uh, at the time, there were seven different islands. I don't know if they've added anything. And each island had its own theme. And one of the first ones you come in, you come in, you're kind of in a, an Arabian type uh, island and you make a left and you head over to the Marvel Island where they have the Incredible Hulk ride and the Spider-Man ride, which is one of the best rides when it's functioning. It seemed like it broke all the time. A Doctor Doom ride and all these rides, basically stuff Stan Lee created. And then you go on to the other islands and, and the, I like the whole park. They, they have island, uh, the next island is like a Sunday morning uh, comic island where they have like Popeye and Marmaduke and, and characters like that. And then they have a few other islands right now that they've added. Last time I was there, they were building a Harry Potter island. They're actually, there was actually already like a medieval type island and they were adding a Harry Potter area to it. And then there's like a, a Dr. Seuss uh, island where you can go to a zoo and see all these animals from Dr. Seuss books and go through the cat in the hat ride. And um, I think it was there on the Dr. Seuss island that really made me think, thinking about the park and all the things on it and think about, you know, Dr. Seuss died uh, around 1990. I want to say it was just before I moved to Florida. I moved to Florida in 91. So, uh, so you know, 1989, 1990, I would say. I'm pretty sure that's when Dr. Seuss passed away. Either that or I'm getting him mixed up with Jim Henson. I think they probably both passed away at the same time. Anyway, off topic. Basically, Dr. Seuss died before this park was made. He didn't get to, like, experience, even though it's all pretend, but, like, real life interact with things he came up with same with all the, the like the creator of Popeye uh, Popeye was uh, you know he's not as popular as he used to be but back in like I want to say the 20s supposedly you know he was one of the most popular comic or cartoon characters and and I always loved him growing up well his creator died uh in the 1930s so he didn't get to go to this island and see you know this boat and and the characters and go on the rides for things Stan Lee was, I feel, very blessed to live in a time where he was able to go and ride the rides and experience things he came up with. If you think back to the 1990s, there was a Spider-Man cartoon, the amazing, uh, Spider-Man the Animated Series, I think it was called. These had a number, uh, Spider-Man has had uh, one or two cartoons every decade for the last like 40 years. Um, but the very last episode of that series, which is a great series, is one of the first cartoons, I think, it was a 2D cartoon where they actually, uh, it was very, you know, could today's standards, not very good, but back then, they actually integrated a lot of 3D stuff, like when Spider-Man was swinging through the cities, it was 2D drawing, but he was swinging through a three-dimensional render, which, again, you could make in something like Blender in about five minutes and probably have it look better. Um, but the cartoon itself was great, and the very last episode of that, Spider-Man's traveling through different dimensions and he stops at one dimension which is supposed to be our dimension and he goes to Stan Lee and tells Stan Lee you've created me and I really exist in other dimensions and uh, you know Stan Lee doing the voice of Stan Lee in that cartoon uh, had one request of Spider-Man it was to go web slinging with him and I, I, I'm sure that that really truly was probably uh, one of the things that Stanley probably always wanted to do. Imagine creating Spider-Man and imagining that and coming up with that idea. And then to be able to go in real life to Universal Studios and ride the Spider-Man ride where you're in this car and Spider-Man's grabbing you with his web and flinging you around and the bad guys are, that you've you created are around you, blowing stuff up. 
and to go on the Hulk ride and feel that that surge of adrenaline that the Hulk would feel and just all that stuff I think it's so great and I think he was so blessed to to live in a time and to get to an age where he was able to experience the things he created in real life um, it's sad that he's gone uh, you know he was still still you know all the cameos in the Marvel movies uh, as of years and I I hope that there's still a few that he recorded that they haven't uh, used yet you know in future movies so we'll still be able to see him I'm sure in the next couple of movies because there's a few scheduled for this next year to come out um, and on that topic something that I, I I had always hoped that they would do is uh, so you know computers are really good about uh, uh, during voices and and there have been software where if you have enough voice samples of someone you can do a text-to-speech thing that that supposedly sounds just like that person and and there's been software by companies that have uh, made it so you only need a few clips and Stanley has always been so great at narrating in, in the cartoons over the years and doing voices and it's just his voice his excitement his speaking his excelsior was always great so I, I really hope that uh, somebody takes samples of his voice and generates like a speech synthesizer that sounds like Stan Lee so we can still hear him reading stories in the future. I think that would be awesome if somebody did that. And I'm sure someday somebody will. Because uh, again, just to hear him read stories, like just to have it to where you can like type in the words from the comics and have him read the comics to you. That's something they could have done before he died, but to do it at some point in the future using speech synthesization, synthesizing his voice would be awesome. Um, yeah, so, it's sad he's gone. One thing that I'm, I don't want to say I'm glad he's gone, but I'm, uh, one thing is, I, I've been subscribed to the Marvel YouTube channel for years now, and they used to do cartoons and fun little things with Stan Lee, but the last, like, two years, all it's been is advertisements for their movies, and I, I get those in my, in my subscription feed. And I, the main reason I haven't unsubscribed is because I kind of, you know, you knew Stan Lee was going to die uh, sometime in the next five to ten years at most again he was 95 and I really thought that um, uh, I would say st stay subscribed because I'd be notified because I'm sure they would do something when he passed away and maybe they still will do something better but today the day after he passed away they did do a, a little two or three minute video but it really looked like it was thrown together I mean it was nice of them to do but it really looked like they didn't put any effort into it and it's like okay it's the day after but again he kind of knew it was going to be happening soon you think they would have had something prepared so hopefully they do something a little bit nicer. Otherwise, I'm going to unsubscribe to their channel in a, in a couple of weeks because um, they just don't really do good content on their YouTube channel anymore. And without him there, I really don't expect much. So anyway, thank you for listening to me talk about this. Uh, Stan Lee. Um, so many great things. You know, my favorite comic book character is the Punisher, which he didn't create, but he named. Uh, originally, the creators wanted to call him the Revenger or something like that. And Stan Lee said, you know what? I had a comic, uh, a character in a comic a few months ago. Uh, he's a throwaway comic ca character. We're never going to use him anymore. Uh, and I called him the Punisher, and I think that name would be good for your character. How about you use that? And I I'm, I'm glad they did. I'm glad the Punisher's the Punisher, not the, the Revenger. So thank you, Stan Lee, for that and so much more. Everybody have a great day.